What's been interesting about the Indian market for you as you've gone about uh, investing, especially in the last decade or so, uh, as the infrastructure story has really uh, come to open up? What's been the interesting and unique aspects of operating in India for you? Well, what is unique? First, it has been a, 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 a fantastic challenge for us. We started relatively small a few years ago and quite timely, I, would, I have to say, because it was at the beginning of the, the, the ramp up and the growth, infrastructure growth uh, in India. And we have always been up to the expectations. Mm. So our, our colleagues in India have always kept up with the, all the expectations, both in terms of growth, because we had to recruit so many uh, new uh, colleagues, in terms of agility, in terms of capability, and in terms of technology. So we are now innovating more and more from India. I mean, for example, uh, the most sophisticated signaling system, it's uh, the ERTMS, uh, it's hybrid level three, it's a little bit technical, but the most sophisticated uh, European standard uh, signaling system is being implemented today in India. So the, we have not only moved in terms of quantity, in terms of quality, but also uh, in terms of technological content. You know, speaking about signaling, and we've had a horrific accident take place in India uh, just a short while ago. Has there been any fresh conversation with the government on the signaling side of things uh, with Alstom? Well, clearly, and, and this was a very uh, terrible accident and a bitter, bitter reminder about the importance of uh, safety on, on, in railway and the importance of signaling systems uh, in railway. So, of course, uh, Alstom is here in India and will make sure that we can provide any uh, technology which has been required. But there is already a, a huge investment plan by the government to deploy a signaling system throughout the country. Uh, so we are participating to, to this plan and of course the fastest, the, the best uh, to avoid uh, as much as, as we can of course uh, this kind of accidents. You know I want to talk about the changes that we're seeing for Alstom globally as well and you've uh, embarked on a strategy uh, to ensure that the company remains agile, remains dynamic, it responds to uh, the challenges uh, that we are presently faced with but also is future ready and as part of that is really the move towards a greener uh, Alstom, uh, noise reduction, passenger experience all of those things are something that uh, you've been focused on and working on hydrogen uh, and the German launch was the was the big milestone that you've been able to achieve what should we realistically expect in terms of innovation as well as further milestones that you hope to achieve on that front well you said it very well one of our main goal in terms of innovation is to improve the environmental performance of our products this comes through energy saving primarily uh, because most of our trains are electrical trains, so we need to make sure that each generation basically consumes 20% less energy than the previous generation. So we achieve that for locomotives, for metros, or the very ASP trains that we are just launching in, in, in Europe. Each time we save 20% energy. But we have some parts of, of the network which is not electrified. Uh, it's true uh, in Europe. It's and more so in the US mm. where most of it is not electrified and it's true in India as well and for that we need to invent to develop some uh, green technology green traction and you have two uh, options if I may say battery for short holes or the hydrogen option and as you have said this year has been a, a very important year in that perspective because we have not only uh, we have broken the record more than 1,175 kilometers of autonomy with uh, few cells, mm. but we have, as importantly, more importantly, two lines uh, which are now under operation uh, in Germany. Of course, we need for that to have a green hydrogen for it to make sense, and for that we need to have a, a complete supply chain of hydrogen. So uh, I, I was, uh, as you know, discussing with the uh, Indian CEO two days ago, it was in, in, back in, in Paris, and there was a, a general consensus to uh, make hydrogen as one of the future uh, technology, needed technology uh, in India for the development of uh, sustainable uh, infrastructure in India. Uh, the government is focusing on green hydrogen and in fact there's been a scheme that's been announced by the government to push uh, the, the production of green hydrogen and set up that ecosystem here in India. But you spoke about speaking with Indian CEOs. You also met Prime Minister Modi. Uh, uh, he was in France for the Bastille Day celebration for, as the guest of the honour. Uh, uh, you know, what was the sense, what was the message that you, uh, that you got from the Prime Minister about uh, expanding here, investing further in India? Well, my minister was extremely uh, positive on and welcoming on the investment and the green investment in particular in, in India. So it was very, uh, 
refreshing and very uh, positive to hear him uh, welcoming us uh, here in India. All what is a sustainable uh, agenda, uh, net zero in 2070, as we know, infrastructure development, as well as on the make in India. And of course, to Alstom, it uh, is music to my ears. I mean, we have invested a lot in India to be uh, compliant with make in India. And not just to be compliant with the law or the policy, but also because we strongly believe uh, that this is a way to uh, do business in India. And it's also for the interest of Alstom uh, to be uh, fully, fully embedded uh, in the local environment, in the local infrastructure. Uh, so I think there are a lot of uh, very positive uh, messages which are encouraging our investment even further. So how much would you say you've invested in India over the last five years? And what could you potentially look at investing in India over the next five years? Well, it's, to some extent, it's a little bit exponential. We have invested more than 300 million euros in CapEx. But, you know, more than CapEx, uh, for us, it's, uh, of course, the capabilities and the engineering capabilities. The fact that we have more than 12,000 employees now in India, more than 5,000 engineers uh, in Bangalore doing, I said, 25% of all our trends worldwide. I mean, this is uh, our main investment in addition to our manufacturing sites. We have six uh, manufacturing sites. Uh, but I say it's uh, both are equally important, the physical investment as well as the know-how investment, uh, which has been great over the recent years. Do you intend to up your headcount at your Bangalore facility? And are you looking at any further manufacturing facilities? Uh, we are. So we're increasing our headcount year after year in Bangalore. Uh, and elsewhere, we are setting up other uh, uh, investment, uh, other engineering centers in Hyderabad, for example. So. Uh, we are welcoming, uh, take the opportunity of speaking to you to say that we are welcoming a lot of engineers uh, in our several engineering centers. Yes, in terms of manufacturing capacity, we are increasing our capabilities and capacities in our different sites. Uh, we, can, we have one site in Madhepura, for mm -hmm. example, as you know, and we'll be uh, relatively opportunistic on whether we extend uh, one site or whether we open new sites. We are opening a new depot. I was uh, this morning visiting a depot. We are doing some maintenance operations and so forth. So it really depends on the different contracts that we are uh, uh, achieving, completing. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the things that I know Alstom is focused on is improving your uh, metric as far as diversity and inclusion is concerned. And you want to have women in managerial roles, in engineering roles, from the current almost 24% to about 28% by 2025, 2026. Uh, uh, how, how strongly are you pushing that and how important is that going to be for you here in India as well? So globally it's extremely important for us. I think it's extremely important for Alstom to be inclusive, uh, not only in its employee base, if I may say, but also on its product. So we are looking a lot on our product, how our products are designed, manufactured, developed uh, in order to be, uh, uh, to welcome all type of passengers. Uh, and that's uh, of course, for people with uh, disabilities and difficulties and so forth, so that we are accommodating all our products. Internally, we are working on all kinds of uh, inclusion, diversity. By the way, we are talking about gender diversity, which is extremely important for us. We are also talking about any kind of cultural, national diversities. We are making sure that people can exchange uh, places. Uh, for example, to take an example, a lot of Indian colleagues are traveling now around the world. So we have. Uh, around 150 to 200 Indian colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, which are employed in different sites of Alstom worldwide. So we are also mixing the nationalities and the culture so that people can be more creative. And as far as women are concerned, yes, we are putting a lot of focus on gender diversity globally, I mean, and gender diversity not in operations as well, engineers, and in India. Gender diversity is very uh, related to local mm. uh, cultural habits. Uh, so we are also a lot of pushing the local uh, management to take local actions. Uh, for example, just one, one of the uh, actions that we can take in India is to make sure that women can drive safe home uh, at night so that uh, if they have to stay uh, long hours at, at, at offices, we are making sure that somebody will accompany uh, them when they are driving back home or something like that. So all, all kind of, you know, sometimes it's day-to-day -day actions mm. so that everybody feels comfortable and, and of course, uh, in particular, uh, all, all the women. 
Well, you know, let me end then by asking, you said that this is uh, a, a unique time because literally every market of yours is firing irrespective of the macroeconomic challenges, be it Europe, the US or Asia Pacific. So what would worry you if the supply chain issues are starting to ease, uh, hopefully inflation will start to ease as well. What are you most concerned about today? What could impact uh, your guidance that you've held out? Well, today we have a very large backlog, as you have said. So the first challenge of Alstom is execution. So we need to deliver this backlog. We need to embark a lot of new people, for example, uh, new engineers in India, uh, several thousands of new engineers in, in India. We need to train them uh, in order to deliver, to always deliver with the same level of quality and customer satisfaction. So my worry is not the market, as I said, the supply chain is improving. So the most important factor is our own internal uh, quality and delivery capabilities. With this kind of growth, uh, we need to be uh, perfect in, in our delivery. Well, we wish you the very best of luck with the execution roadmap. And thank you very much for joining us here to take us through what the road ahead looks like for Alstom in India and what the global outlook uh, is as well. Always a pleasure. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of the Global Dialogue from all of us here on the team. For now, goodbye and thanks for watching.